Professor Coimbra, can this abnormal test be lethal for the potential donor? Yes. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, I would like to make crystal clear, crystal clear that uh, uh, several patients that are now uh, currently uh, selected for the diagnosis of brain death, they could be recovered to a normal daily life if they were not submitted to apnea test and they were given timely, updated, proper treatment. So this is something very important and I would like to make that clear, crystal clear. Uh, in other words, uh, by uh, performing those tests for brain death, those so-called diagnostic tests for brain death, we are killing patients to make sure that they are dead, which is nonsense. So this is the first statement that I would like to make uh, clear, crystal clear, as I said. And why am I, say, am I saying that? Uh, we have to go back to 1968 when uh, uh, brain death, the concept of brain death, was introduced into medicine, medical practice. Uh, back to 1968, uh, physicians, medical doctors, used to think that uh, when we had uh, uh, no detectable uh, neurological functions uh, which is performed by the brain, the only possible explanation would be uh, irreversible uh, intracranial circulatory arrest. And why would this uh, circular, uh, circulatory arrest occur? Uh, the reason why uh, there is uh, a lack of brain circulation in a patient who is a victim of uh, brain trauma, head trauma, is because after the injury, the brain begins to be sw swollen. Uh, and as the volume of the brain increases, the pressure into the skull increases too. Uh, so that uh, as time goes by, the intracranial vessels that are supplying blood to the brain are compressed. Uh, by this uh, increased uh, pressure. And uh, back in 1968, uh, we used to think that when uh, all those uh, so-called uh, uh, cephalic reflexes mm -hmm. were like, pupil. like pupil, uh, mm -hmm. pupillary reflex mm -hmm. to light, mm -hmm. for example, when all those reflexes uh, were no longer uh, detectable. The only possible explanation is that uh, the intracranial pressure, pressure uh, had reached uh, maximum values. That means that uh, the blood vessels uh, within the intracranial cavity were completely compressed and there were, there were no blood flow to the brain. So, uh, uh, they associated the lack of function to necrosis, to irreversible uh, damage to the brain tissue. Lack of function, no function, no vitality. Okay? Mm -hmm. That's uh, the concept, uh, the, physiolog the pathophysiological concept that was proposed in 1968 uh, to uh, uh, select uh, the criteria to diagnose brain death. Mm -hmm. Okay, but uh, later on, uh, uh, the uh, progress of uh, medical science uh, demonstrated that when the blood flow is decreased to only half the normal level, mm -hmm. the, those reflexes cannot, uh, can no longer be uh, detected but the brain is, is still recoverable mm -hmm. at this point. Mm -hmm. 
within the range of uh, 20 to 50 percent of brain blood flow uh, of the normal brain, brain blood flow the brain is uh, functionally silent but it is it's still recoverable mm -hmm. okay uh, if you induce uh, uh, the apnea test that means that you stop mechanical ventilation in order to increase uh, the carbon uh, the carbon dioxide concentration in the blood. When you do that, uh, you cause uh, what we call in medicine uh, a sudden respiratory acidosis. And that means that uh, uh, there will be a negative effect on the strength uh, of uh, heartbeats. In other words, the patient will, will develop hypotension and this is known to occur in up to, up to 40% of patients that are submitted to a pneumonia test. If you induce hypertension, you will decrease the, the blood circulation. Mm -hmm. And if the patient was uh, within, uh, having blood levels to the brain, within that, that range, uh, of 50, uh, of 20 to 50 percent of the normal level, and you decrease the blood pressure, the blood flow will go down to the range of uh, down to the uh, below the level of 20 percent, and that means that we we'll, you can induce uh, irreversible brain damage by performing the apnea test. In, a, in addition to that, uh, if you are decreasing the blood flow to the brain you are also decreasing the blood flow to the, the respiratory uh, centers. Those centers uh, are the structures that you are testing when you do the apnea test. You want to know whether the, the, the brainstem, the respiratory centers in the brainstem, will respond to increases in carbon dioxide concentrations. But if you, if you decrease the blood pressure, you will be decreasing the uh, blood flow to respiratory centers mm -hmm. and the respiratory center will not respond to, to, uh, uh, to apnea test. And you can, you can damage the respiratory centers irreversibly. You can irreversibly damage the respiratory centers by inducing apnea in these patients. Uh, it should be uh, clear that uh, uh, the apnea test may last up to 10 minutes. A patient can be uh, without proper respiration, uh, mechanical uh, respiration mm -hmm. for up to 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. And this may kill the patient. Uh, and that's why I'm saying that when we are testing those patients uh, for brain death, mm -hmm. uh, we are killing them. Uh, we are killing uh, an unknown number of those patients. Some of those patients may have uh, irreversible brain damage prior to those tests, but a large number of them may be recoverable up to that point. And when you induce a clear test in those patients that up to that point could be recovered, they, can, they are no longer recovered.